Welcome. Let's discuss the volume of a prism. Let's start by considering a square. And notice that this square, it's in a flat surface, so we cannot talk about volume yet, but we can definitely find the area of this square. So now let's think about what would happen if we place another square on top of the one that we have drawn here. By placing a square right on top of the one that we started with, we have created a three-dimensional figure, and now we can start thinking about how we can define the volume of this figure. One way to think about what just happened, we got the volume that we started with, and this volume got multiplied by some height. Now, what would happen if we stack another square on top of the one that we have now? So notice what happened. The area that we started with got multiplied by another height. And if we continue doing this, if we got another square and we place it on the figure that we have now, the same idea continues. The original area that we started with it's just getting multiplied by a different height. And we can continue doing this until we get a figure that is just bigger in dimension. So now we can say that the volume of a prism is nothing more than the area of the base times the height of the figure. Let's take a look at one example. What we're going to do here, we're going to find the volume of the prism given below. So we have just defined the volume of a prism as the area of the base times the height. You can think of the base as the figure that we keep stacking to obtain the prism. And notice that in this figure, this trapezoid seems to be the figure that we keep stacking at the height of 200 centimeters. So let's concentrate on finding the area of the base of this trapezoid. So let's examine this trapezoid individually. And let's remind ourselves that the area of a trapezoid, it is equivalent to one half times the height of the trapezoid times the addition of the first base and the second base. For well, the first base, we have that information that is equivalent to 100. The second base, we have that information. It is equivalent to 40. But the only piece of information that we're missing to find the area of the base, it is the length of the height. And to define the height, let's consider a vertical line that connects the first base with the second base. And now it's a matter of finding the length of this perpendicular line. This will be the height that we're looking for. But notice that the sides of this trapezoid, they are congruent to each other. So we know that the length of this section is also going to be congruent to the length of this section right here. And we have enough information to find that because we are given that this whole length is equivalent to 100. And using the length of the base below, which is 40, we can conclude that the summation of these two sections should be equal to 60. But because each of the sections are congruent to each other, then the length of each of the sections is third. So now we just concentrate on this right triangle right here. We have enough information to find the height. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. 30 squared plus the height squared that is equal to 50 squared. So now we're going to get 900 plus the height square. It is equivalent to 2,500. And if we subtract 900 to both sides, we're going to get that the height square is equivalent to 1,600. And to solve for the height, we need to take the square. And the square root on 1,600, it is 40. So now we have enough information to find the area of the base. 
there'll be one half times 40 times the addition of the first base, which is 100, plus the addition of the second base, which is 40. If we simplify this, when we multiply these two values, that is 20. And the addition is 140. And 20 times 140 is 2,800 centimeter square. Now that we have found the area of the base, we need to think about the height of this figure. But notice that the height, it's how many times did the figure got stuck, which in this case, we have that information of being of 200 centimeters. So now if we put all this together, now we can say that the volume, it is the area of the base, which we found it to be 2,800, times the height, which in this case, it is the value of 200. And it's going to give us a, a big value, 560,000. But when it comes to volume, the units that we use are not centimeter squares, but centimeters cubed. So we have properly found the volume that we can find inside this prism. And just one thing to clarify, the reason why we call it centimeter squares is because I was assuming that all of these measurements are given in centimeters. Hello, if you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left. 